Hi everyone, Tamara here. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make a rag quilt. It's a super easy beginner sewing project. If you have a sewing machine and you can sew in a straight line, you will be able to do this. Before I jump into the tutorial, I just want you to know that anything that I talk about in this tutorial, the sizing, the tools I use, the fabric I'm using, um, anything at all, I'm gonna list in the description down below so you won't miss a thing. All right, let's get started. So first, let's just quickly go through the tools that you're gonna need to get this job done in the easiest way possible. Without these tools, you can still make yourself a rag quilt. It's just gonna take a lot more cutting. So let's go through the tools that I use to make this project. I use a rotary cutter, a quilter's ruler, a quilter's sewing mat. This one is one of those self-healing ones. It's super helpful because it already has the lines on the mat, which will help you cut your squares evenly. You will obviously need pins as well as thread. I wanna talk quickly about thread. Uh, you're gonna to want to use a higher quality thread. Please don't go out and buy cheap thread from the dollar store or from Ikea. That thread will break on you and cause you frustration and it's not worth it. This particular thread is by Guterman. It's 100% polyester and I love it. All right, so let's get started. How to make your very own rag quilt. You're gonna need fabric. I use flannelette fabric and I use a batting in the center. Batting is something you don't have to use, especially if it's your first project, but I am going to add batting into this blanket. So if you want to do exactly what I'm doing, you will need batting. For the sake of this tutorial, we are going to be making a baby rag quilt. This rag quilt is seven squares by six squares. The squares themselves are cut six inch by six inch, and the batting is cut five inch by five inch. Once you cut all of your squares, you should have 48 squares cut. I did five different types of fabric, as you can see here, and I did about a half a yard of each fabric. I ended up with some scraps, which I'll use for another project, but that's about how much fabric I bought for this blanket. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut those squares. Six inch by six inch, super easy with your rotary cutter. They're gonna end up looking like this and then you're going to want to sandwich your squares together. Where is my sample? Hold on, lost my sample. So your fabric is going to look like this when you sandwich it. So you want both of your squares facing outwards and the wrong sides are gonna be facing in. Then you're going to place your batting in there. So as you can see here, it's a bit smaller than the rest of your fabric. I did add an extra layer of flannel into this blanket as well, which is something that I've never done before. But because I was making this blanket and I wanted to see if I could get the ragging itself thicker, I thought, why not add an extra layer of flannel? And it worked. It made it super nice, super thick but also it was a headache to cut. So if this is your first rag quilt that you're ever making, I suggest not adding that extra layer in, but do add the batting because it gives it a nice heavier feel. Then once you have sandwiched all of your fabric together, you're going to want to pin it. Four pins per sandwich, and it'll look like this. So you've got your pins on all edges, and then you're going to sew crisscross on all of your squares. An easy way to do this is to sew all of your pieces through the sewing machine in one line, cut them apart, flip them, and sew them through and do the other line. I find it's the fastest way for me to sew all of the X's on my squares. Sometimes I don't even use the pins on my squares because it doesn't bother me if my fabric moves a little bit because the ragging fixes all of my mistakes for me. So once you have all of your squares sewn with the crisscross, then you're gonna move on to figuring out your pattern. You can lay out all of your fabric, lay it out in whatever pattern you want. Sometimes if people do only two different types of fabric, they can do a checkered pattern. I like lots of different fabric because I can never pick when I'm at the fabric store. So if you're like me, then just try to keep the solids away from the busy and I'll just show you again. This is the pattern I ended up with for this blanket. I think it worked out quite nicely. Once you have decided on where all of your fabric is going to sit in your pattern, you're gonna to wanna to number all of your rows so you don't forget where your rows ended up laying. So just grab scrap paper, one through seven, 
pin it to the edge of every row or even take a picture of the pattern that you've laid out on the table so you can refer back to it and remember which row goes where because believe me these rows can get mixed up and you will end up disappointed when you realize your entire blanket is put together and one of your rows is in the wrong spot. So once you have decided on the pattern for your rag quilt, then the next thing you're gonna need to do is pin your rows. When you're pinning your rows, you want all of the edges facing the same way and they're gonna face out because that's what you need for ragging. When you sew your edges together, you are going to do a half inch seam around everything. So you're gonna pin all of your rows so that they're all sticking upwards like this and then you're gonna run them through your sewing machine at a half inch. You don't have to do back stitches for the crisscross part or for this part because when you start sewing your entire blanket together, that's when you're gonna to wanna to do back stitches uh, and that will hold all of your rows together. Once you have all of your rows sewn together, now it's time to take all of those rows and button them up against the, the row above them, pin them together, and you will end up with this. Can you see that there? That's how you'll want to pin them up. That way this side you will hold through the sewing machine and the bottom side the sewing machine will naturally push backwards. I find that's the easiest way to pin your rows together without ending up with your rows bubbling and causing you a lot of grief. Oh, don't forget, when you're sewing your rows and you're sewing around the edge, do a back stitch. So once all of your rows are actually sewn together, then it's time to sew around your entire blanket. Do a half inch seam around the entire thing and instead of folding that hem uh, one way or the other way, you're going to take those pieces, open them up, and continue that half inch seam across there. It just gives it a neater look at the end of your blanket. All right, your rag quilt has been sewn, put together, and now it's time to start snipping your blanket. So when you look at your hems, you'll see that you have a folded piece here. So you'll just snip that so that this piece will be loose. It'll look something like that. You'll be able to snip along all of your edges and all of your center edges, just doing it a centimeter at a time. I find that helps with your ragging. And then it's time for washing. Your washer and your dryer, I'm assuming, are expensive, as most are. So the washing and drying for the ragging effect is very important. Please listen to me. <laughs> Don't skip these steps because they're vital to keep your washer and dryer lasting long. <laughs> you do not want to make a nice little rag quilt as a gift and end up ruining your washer and dryer. So your blanket is going to go through your washing machine two times. Please put your rag quilt in the washing machine with a couple of old towels. It will help balance your washing machine so that your rag quilt is protected from extra ripping, which I have done to a blanket when I forgot to throw towels in but also it helps your washing machine stay balanced so that the cycle can go all the way through. Your first round, you don't need to use soap, use warm water and a quick wash. Your second round, do use soap, still warm water, still a quick wash. Once you take the towels and your rag quilt out of the washing machine, shake them outside so that all of those extra little lint pieces that have shown up aren't sitting on your blanket moving into the dryer. Then put your blanket and, and the towels into the dryer. Do it on a medium heat and remember to check on your rag quilt about halfway through the drying process. Set yourself an alarm so that you can empty that lint trap because it will fill up quickly. And if you want, you can also take a moment to shake out your blanket again outside, shake out those towels outside, throw it back in the dryer for the rest of the cycle. If you follow these steps, your washer and dryer will not be affected by the ragging process. And that's how you make your very own rag quilt. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you do end up making this rag quilt, please leave a comment down below. Let me know how it went. 
If you have any other tips and tricks you'd like to share with others, give this video a thumbs up. If you liked this content, it really helps me know where to go with the next video. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more creative content. See you next time. Oh, wait a minute. Should I share with you what next time might be? Give me a minute. Let me go find it. Since I said see you next time, you want to know what's next time? <laughs>